Hi there, and welcome back to Sot and Brain Hub. My name is Calvin, and today we'll be rapidly reviewing the brachial plexus. A nerve plexus is formed when nerve fibres from two or more spinal segments join together and segregate to travel to a common anatomical region. The brachial plexus is a network of nerves in the shoulder that carry movement and sensory signals from the spinal cord to the arm and hands. Specifically, the brachial plexus contains both motor and sensory fibres originating from spinal segments C5 to T1. The brachial plexus can be divided into five sections. Let's take a look at these different sections in turn to see how they are formed. Firstly, ventral rami exiting spinal segments C5 to T1 form roots, with one root for every spinal segment. These roots are named after the corresponding spinal segment. For instance, the root originating from the C7 spinal segment is termed the C7 root. Then, moving slightly more distally, these roots form trunks. Here, the C5 and C6 roots join together to form the superior trunk. Likewise, the C8 and T1 roots join together to form the inferior trunk. Unlike the other roots, the C7 root continues on its own to form the middle trunk. Next, each trunk divides into an anterior or posterior division. This is an important dichotomization that we can use to help us remember muscular innervation as all of the fibres in the anterior divisions of each trunk will go on to supply muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm, and all fibres in the posterior divisions of each trunk will go on to supply muscles in the posterior compartment of the arm. Moving on, the posterior divisions of the superior, middle and inferior trunks join together to form the posterior cord. The anterior division of the upper trunk and the anterior division of the middle trunk join together to form the lateral cord. The remaining anterior division of the inferior trunk forms the medial cord by itself. The naming of the posterior, lateral and medial cords are made in relation to their position to the axillary artery. From here, the five terminal branches of the brachial plexus are formed. These terminal branches are the median, musculocutaneous, ulna, axillary and radial nerves. Let's now see how these terminal branches are formed. Structurally, the posterior cord divides into two terminal branches. The axillary nerve, which innervates the deltoid and teres minor muscles, and the radial nerve, which innervates muscles in the posterior compartment of the upper and lower arm, and is responsible for nearly all extension in the arm and hand. The lateral cord divides into its terminal branch, the musculocutaneous nerve, which innervates the muscles in the anterior compartment of the upper arm. The lateral cord also contributes in part to the median nerve, which innervates many of the lateral flexors of the hand. And finally, the medial cord divides into its terminal branch, the ulnar nerve, which is broadly responsible for innervating some of the medial extrinsic and intrinsic flexors of the hand. The medial cord also contributes to the median nerve alongside the lateral cord. The terminal branches of the lateral and medial cords form a characteristic M shape, which is one of the most identifiable aspects of the brachial plexus and is an important anatomical landmark to help you orientate yourself. Let's finish by talking about injuries to the brachial plexus. Such injuries are usually caused by trauma to the plexus roots as they exit the cervical spine. This most commonly occurs in road traffic accidents and falls from height. Inflammatory, neoplastic and compressive causes are also possible. The effects of the injury can include paralysis, loss of sensation and pain. The specific clinical presentation will depend on the roots involved and the degree of injury to each root. There are also some common symptoms related to neuropathy of the terminal branches of the brachial plexus. For instance, compression of the median nerve as it passes through the wrist can lead to carpal tunnel syndrome, characterised by numbness, pain and tingling in the wrist and hand. Injury to the radial nerve can cause a characteristic wrist drop due to the radial nerve's innervation of the extensor muscles of the wrist and pressure or stretching of the ulnar nerve can lead to cubital tunnel syndrome, 
which can cause numbness or tingling in the ring or little fingers and pain or weakness in the forearm or hand. Finally, injuries to the axillary and musculocutaneous nerves can lead to a loss of movement or sensation in the regions supplied by these nerves. Thank you for watching this rapid review of the brachial plexus. Remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and others related to the anatomy of the head and neck and the brain. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.